Today's anxiety hack is if then. Now, total disclaimer, like with so many of the ideas I share, this is not my idea. It's a really widely used idea in cognitive behavioral therapy, which is therapy where we try and change how we think in order to change our behaviors and actions. So if then um, takes worries and it helps us to think about what we would do if they were to actually happen. Now, why this is helpful is because sometimes we've got lots and lots of little niggles that are worrying us and things that we're concerned about, and they're just kind of sitting there, kind of festering in our mind, and they're making us feel very anxious and out of control, and that's really hard. And sometimes, if instead of just letting them be there, or dismissing them, or saying, that's not likely to happen, and this is either true of yourself or if you're supporting someone, if instead of doing that, we go, okay, let's list them out, let's figure out all the things that are worrying me or worrying you and think about if that does happen then what so if then basically instead of minimizing or dismissing our worries saying that's not going to happen we run towards them we run towards what scares us and we go okay if the worst case scenario happens this is what i'll do so we plan ahead so it's really simple you would just list out all your worries about a particular situation or something that's upcoming and then think about, and if that happens, then I will X. Um, it's actually a really good way of preparing for stuff too. And it does mean that if you've got kind of worries, concerns, issues that might prevent you from doing something, you can address them ahead of time. Now, of course, lots of the kind of worries that go round and around in our head, particularly if we're someone who struggles with anxiety disorders, they're not very likely to happen, but just occasionally they will. And by acknowledging that, you know, there's some outside chance that this thing might happen, but if it does, I have a plan for that and I can do that, we feel more in control. Also voicing our concerns aloud and putting them in a list or discussing them with someone can help us to actually kind of, it, it kind of validates the concern but can also help us to realise that this isn't very likely to happen, which is helpful in and of itself. But that doesn't stop us having a plan in place just in case. So for example, I've done loads of work recently around like exam and test anxiety. So how you would do this with a child who had um, anxieties about a, a test or exam, um, they might say, I'm really worried that I might walk into the exam and the moment I open the paper, my mind goes completely blank and I don't know any of the answers. Um, and actually that does happen to people. That's a really valid worry. Um, and so we can say, okay, well, if that does happen, then what would you do? And we actually put an action plan in place. Now, what's gonna work will depend on the individual, but if it were me, then I would be saying, okay, the thing that's most likely gonna mean my mind has gone blank is because I'm really anxious, I've gone into overwhelm, and what I need to do in that instance is to calm down. So at this time of calm, ahead of the exam, ahead of opening the paper, I would say, if my mind goes blank and I'm freaking out, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use one of my breathing exercises, like my five finger breathing or my box breathing, for example. It could be anything, but you make a plan. If my mind goes blank, then I will do this. Some of the worries might be bigger and less likely. So a child in the same situation might say, what if I completely fail all my exams and everything goes entirely wrong and I'm gonna be a failure in life and oh my goodness. Again, these are the kind of concerns that children often come to us. And instead of saying, that's not gonna happen, we might look for evidence, and that's a whole nother video, we might look for evidence that suggests that they're not, you know, it's not likely to happen. But in this instance, we're saying, okay, well, if you did fail all your exams, then what would we do? And we'd be putting this into context here and saying, well, there's different options here. So if it were GCSE exams, for example, we might say, well, if you were to fail them, then there's always the possibility to retake them. Or you might make slightly different options for the next year with your on ongoing ac academic career. And we'd explore what those different options might be. We'd acknowledge that this is perhaps unlikely to happen, but knowing that if it did, that there's a plan that we could put into place and that things would ultimately be okay is really helpful. So this if-then planning, you can use it for anything. And the key thing really is get the worries out, write them down, share them in a list, get them out there, make them tangible and real, and then work through them one at a time and go, well, if this happens, then I will do X. It gives a bit of a feeling of control, as well as making those worries kind of real and tangible, but in a manageable way. So they're suddenly like, instead of this kind of mess in our head, they're like a list, a thing we can try and manage and do something about. And it gives us practical steps to take if things do go wrong. So I struggle with anxiety hugely all the time, like 
it's a real big issue in my life but I would have to say that this kind of planning does mean that sometimes people think I'm kind of supernaturally calm in situations when other people wouldn't be so I do a lot of public speaking and things go wrong all the time when you do public speaking like there's always tech issues and that kind of thing and lots of people who public speak a little bit get really freaked out by this kind of thing but me I've planned for every possible situation so I know if this happens then I will do that and so I don't have to worry and that's actually helpful too if you are a generally anxious person if you control the things that you can control and you know you've got a plan in place and that gives you a bit of a sense of calm and control then actually you're not expending so much energy and you've got more capacity to kind of cope with the rest of the stuff that might be kind of going around in your head so I personally find it really helpful Finally, if you're supporting someone who's anxious, the other thing that this exercise will do, as well as the kind of benefits of specifically doing the exercise, is it will help you to understand them and the things that worry them and will give you a kind of context for exploring this further in, you know, in the future. But also it will help them to feel heard and seen by you, which is actually really important in terms of building that connection and that relationship so that you can work together on this. Good luck. I'd really like to hear how you get on with it please leave a comment down below with some of the if thens that you've explored with someone and what contexts uh, you've used this in um, good luck see you next time if you haven't please subscribe i'm still constantly aiming for the 10k so i can get on youtube's creator program so please subscribe tell your friends to subscribe subscribe your cat subscribe subscribe uh, and i'll see you next time new videos every tuesday and friday take care be safe and be kind to yourselves bye